an illusion to show truth, which I think is really important. If you're a skeptic, magic is something that you should, uh, if not study, you should at least be aware of it. So, truth to show illusion. Truth is, of course, uh, objective, objective, whatever you want to say. So, my, my standpoint is, <clears throat> and then I spent nine years being a professional psychic. Actually, it was ten, uh, give or take, a few years. Uh, a lot of people don't know this. If you've seen the first episode of Bullshit that I did with Penn and Teller, uh, uh, Penn Gillette says that I'm a reformed con artist. That isn't exactly true, <laughs> because, because I was a skeptic all along, and I was working with Michael Shermer and Skeptic Magazine from the very uh, inception of Skeptic Magazine. I've always been a skeptic because I'm a magician. Uh, when I see something in this hand, I automatically want to know what the other hand's doing. It's, it's a disease thing, you know? You, you, you learn to think that way with magic. You learn to automatically question when something's in your face, you want to know what's underneath it. So, magic, professional skeptic, professional psychic. How does the psychic thing work into it? Well, I, uh, I was always a big fan of uh, old uh, 30s movies about uh, psychics and mediums. And I always wanted to climb to the very top of that trash heap that is uh, the uh, media psychic. And so I decided I would make that my goal, to get as high as I could in that realm and learn as much as I could about it. That's what I did. And uh, it was quite an experience, quite an eye-opening experience for me. I learned a lot. I was got the, I had the pleasure of having a lot of really good teachers. They were all Wu teachers, heavily steeped in Wu. They had no idea about skepticism. I kept my mouth shut about being a skeptic, and I just nodded and said, uh-huh, uh-huh, show me how you do this, and this, and this, and this. So it was a learning experience for me. So that kind of brings us up to where I'm at today. Guerrilla skepticism, okay? Now, I'm going to make a, a, a differentiation, because I think that's important. Um, I don't know how many people know about Phil Plate's uh, speech that he made about uh, being a dick, okay? Uh, it was a Pam, Pam 8, he talked about, you know, uh, we need to be nice to people. We want to get the word of skepticism through, don't be a dick, be nice. Uh, talk to people in a kind and gentle manner. You'll, you'll get much more uh, done with sweetness instead of being sour. And I will say that there is something to that, okay? If you have a relative or you have a person who you may not agree with their point of view, yeah, I think you have to be, not, if not gentle, you have to be understanding and tolerant. However, there's a whole branch of what's going out in the world that I take exception to that. I, I'm the, I'll be the biggest dick I can be with people like Sylvia Brown, John Edward, James Van Prague, people who are predatory and know what they're doing is wrong, okay? And the list grows every day. For every one skeptic, there's probably 10 phony mediums that are just starting today. They're just putting their sign out on the front of their building, spiritual advisor, okay? So yes, we are swamped. We are in what I like to refer to as the golden age of the con, okay? If you look at the history of spiritualism, uh, a lot of people say, oh yes, uh, when the Victorian area ended and people did seances and all of that, that that was the golden age of spiritualism. But look around right now, folks. It's, it's huge. I mean, this is, we're in an era now where, you know, we've got the bank frauds. I mean, I don't even need to tell you. We are in the golden age of the con. And that's why we are swamped. And so my point of view, guerrilla skepticism is saying, look, we need to fight fire with fire, okay? Now, people say, well, two wrongs don't make a right. They, do you think John Edward and Sylvia Brown care a bit about being tolerant? They don't care. So why should we? So what I try and do is get out in the street, get in people's spaces, and cause a commotion. And if people don't like it, that's fine. They can say, oh, this is, a, this is a brand of skepticism which I don't agree with. That's fine. There's room for everything on the spectrum. You can write, you can sing, you can dance, you can get out and do things, okay? So, um, 
for me, I did a television show, a pilot called The Skeptologist, and, and like Brian and Baxter, we try to sell this thing, we try and sell science. It, it, you have, I think you have to be, in, to get in the media, you have to be confronted. You have to confront things, and if you have to say some upsetting things that might upset some people, that's how I get hurt. That's how I think you can get hurt. Yes? Uh, but the, isn't, the commo isn't causing the commotion just a, a means to an end? Ultimately, you have a, a larger goal than simply yes. call it causing the commotion. Yeah, well, no, I, I think drawing attention to issues is the critical, critical thing here. It's not, in other words, I was, uh, many times I've been, people say I'm an exploiter, I'm self-aggrandizing myself. So there's, there is a lot of negativity that comes my way. And I was, uh, for my skeptical, I won't go into it, but for my skeptical work, I'm now banned in the UK from lecturing. Uh, I, I had tours in Scotland and England. They were canceled because of a television show I did that was called Secrets of the Psychics. And what I did is I gave away, and I didn't even mean to give it away, it was a, a, I made no agreement with the producer of the show, which is, you know, in Hollywood there's a line that says, uh, Verbal agreements aren't worth the paper they're written on. And in this case, that's exactly what it was. I made an agreement to show something. And because of my past work with Penn and & Teller and other television things that I did, I said, you know, I really don't, because magicians, they really did not like, they don't like that, OK? I made an agreement with the producer. I said, I will show this effect, which was they asked me to do a prediction of the future. But it had to be done in 10 minutes. So I used a mentalism technique to show that. And I said to the producer, I will, I will show you how I do it, but you're going to have to use another set of hands and we'll do a voiceover because really I don't want to get in trouble with magicians. Well, they didn't listen to me. And they went ahead and showed my hands with a big bubble of light showing me doing the move. And I was watching it. And as soon as I saw it on TV, the phone started ringing. Next thing I knew, I'm banned in the UK. He's an exposer. Uh, he's blah, blah, blah. So basically, it ruined my magic career. But that doesn't matter because I don't, I don't, I don't have a belief in magic. I have a belief in using my skills to do something bigger than fool people. Okay, I mean, you can do a card trick, you can do mentalism, you can convince the audience that you have supernatural powers, but that's not helping anybody. So my goal is to get out on the street, get on the radio, get on television, and I like what you're talking about. We need somebody who can get on the television and rant. Here I am. <laughs> this, this has been my goal for a long time because I'm full of anger. I've seen with my own eyes for 10 years this supernatural thing build. And, and I've always been a fan of supernatural things. I love Twilight Zone. I loved Outer Limits. I grew up with all that. So, of course, I was steeped in a form of woo, okay? But it was never saying, I mean, I knew that Outer Limits and Twilight Zone, they were written by great writers. That's all. They weren't, they weren't based on any great cosmic truth. So, so I've always loved that. But what's happened is that has taken hold. And we've had, we've had eras and eras of television shows like, how many people remember The Invaders? Okay, here's a television show from the 60s. Excellent writers, excellent direction, cast, everything about aliens that come down and they have a hand and their one finger. That's how you can, the only way you can tell that they're uh, duplicates is that their finger, you know, is stiff like this. Okay, so now we've, we've been, generations have passed, so you have to believe that parents who saw that and told their kids about that show, et cetera, et cetera, it's like telephone. So now we have people believe in alien abductions and that aliens are here. It's no surprise to me. So. I'm off the track a little bit. The idea is guerrilla skepticism is not popular, okay? I get a lot of flack about it. I just did a thing for 1023, which is uh, homeopathy. <clears throat> we overdosed on, I took, uh, Susan took Belladonna, I took uh, Bosporus, uh, Susan's son took uh, a, a, a drug that they use for lethal injections. The point is, we did this to show that there's nothing in it. And they, it, it happened all over the world. And yet, I write for Skeptic Blog, and people are coming down on me. This isn't effective. 
you're just being uh, contrary. So it's not a popular stance to take, but I see no, I see no alternative. Yes. One of the interesting things I see about this is uh, when James Randi had pulled a few of his hoaxes, they weren't well taken either. Right. And and I don't know if you agree with this opinion, but when you actually do uh, these these guerrilla skepticism techniques, you have to expect the flack, but having it recorded in history seems to be the real value of That's it. Right. Because we go back and, you know, I mean, years from now, someone could uh, stumble onto this 1023 thing and go, ah. Yeah. You know, and, and at that point, it won't That's seem... That's a good point. You know, just like Randy's hoaxes. When you look at back on them now, they're not insulting, they're funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. I think hindsight, you know, will show, that history will show that, you know, we're not doing the wrong thing. It just shocks people who, who change, they don't want to take change. They, they're not used to having somebody uh, explain this. We, we did a Paracon, uh, the IIG did a, uh, a table at Paracon, and we were amazed that there were great people, very nice people, who just didn't know there was any other way to think about it. They just didn't know what skepticism was. We said to them, well, did you ever think maybe this is what happened? They were like, no, wow, I never thought of that. That could have been a trick, or whatever. So I think we're in an era where there's so much paranormal thought that we have to counter that with in-your-face things and let, and let time take its toll, and you know, the, the pioneers get all the arrows is a great <laughs> expression, you know. But we're not even pioneers, because if you look at the history of, in my case, magicians, there was Keller, there was Thurston, Houdini, <clears throat> Blackstone, all these guys, they, they knew a trick when they saw it. And I mean, they just were, they couldn't believe it that people were buying into mediumship and buying into ghosts, and they just, you know, and again, in Houdini's case, I think he saw an opportunity to make some money, and I think <laughs> that Penn and Teller see an opportunity to make a little money. I don't see any problem with that, okay? Because you have to eat. Along the way, while you're raising your flag and making your point, you have to eat. And I don't think there's any skeptics that I know who are even half as greedy as, uh, as the John Edwards and the, and the Sylvia Browns. And I know how Sylvia works, because I've watched her for years and years and years, and it's just so blatant to me. It's not even good cold reading. <laughs> now, we're in an era where, in the old days, mentalists and people who did spiritualistic phenomenon, you had to have some chops. You know, you had to have an acting ability. You had to be able to do something and back it up. Today, anything goes. Just get out on the stage and just let it rip. Let it rip. I could go through this audience, do the same thing. It, they had. They don't even work. They don't even work hard. They're not. They don't even do any of the techniques that could really make it. If one of those people wanted to really make a dent, they could. But they're lazy. So it's up to us to pick up the slack. Okay. If they're lazy and we know they're doing wrong, there's no excuse. So I guess to some, to my summation is, <clears throat> do something. You know. Don't complain and say, ah, this, the world is terrible, what are we going to do? Go out and do something. Or you don't even have to go out, you've got the internet, you've got podcasts, you've got all these ways to make a point. Do something, because it's not going to get any better. The, the worse the economy gets, the worse, or the, the more of these people are going to come out of the woodwork, because they know that people want to hear good news. And I can tell you good news, if your life's going to get better, oh, the lines in your palm tell me, oh, yeah, this is, you're going to get a new wardrobe. And people say, well, how do you know that? It's there on your clothesline. <laughs> <laughs> there's entertainment, and there's plain, blatant criminality of the worst kind. And for me, it's clear. So my job is to take the clarity that I have try and sh uh, share it with other people, and I think humor is really important, but it better be pretty black, otherwise you'll just come off as a comedian. So, yes, <clears throat> you had a question. I will take questions in the back, yes. Touching on what you talked about a little earlier, um, about the fact that you did this particular stunt, 